Hi everyone, welcome to Imaging Study. Today we are going to see a case of cherry 2 malformation. It is a common abnormality where we see the small posterior fossa, cerebellar compression, and hindbrain herniation through from and magna. It is almost always associated with open neural tip defect. A young prime gavida came to us with 7 months of amenorrhea. She had no history of previous antenatal checkup. Let's see what we have got on ultrasound. Here you can see that we have measured the bipartal diameter and femoral length. The bipartal diameter shows it as 25 plus weeks of gestation, whereas with femoral length you can see it is 27 plus weeks of gestation. So there is a discrepancy between the bipartal diameter and the femoral length. And also if you look here, the head doesn't look quite normal. It doesn't look like an oval head that we try to use for the bipartal diameter measurement. So there is something abnormality here. Here is the coronal section of the facial region and the orbital region. You still can see the head looks quite like a towering shape. I was a little bit confused about the cranial synastosis in this patient with this view, but hopefully it wasn't present there. Here is another view of the coronal and axial sections of the head and you can see the concavity of the frontal bone making the head looks like a lemon. So this is a lemon shaped head which is very commonly associated with the cerebellar abnormality and also the spinal defect. So we want to look for that. Also you can see the frontal horns of the lateral ventricles looks dilated here. Here is another view we have tried to measure the lateral ventricle. Don't compare it with the regular protocol because I was just searching for the abnormalities at that time. The lateral ventricles are quite dilated here in axial and coronal sections. When you are doing the anomaly scan, obviously you should compare what you see with what you measure. Here is another axial section and you can see the lateral ventricles look slightly dilated here and this is the third ventricle which is also dilated around in shape here which should appear as a slit like pattern in normal cases. And the head looks lemon shaped and on the right image you can see this is a glimpse of cerebellum. It doesn't look like a bilobed appearance or rather it looks like deformed almost banana shaped. So it is a compressed cerebellum. Let's look at another view and here is the compressed cerebellum and posterior to the cerebellum there is no cisternomagnum here. It is effaced due to the cerebellar abnormality. Let's see on real time and you can see this is the lemon shaped head. This is the cerebellum and the cistern magnum is effaced. You can't see an anechoic cistern magnum here. Again another view and you can see the dilated ventricles the lemon shaped head and this is the cerebellum which is deformed and banana shaped. You can also see the overall amniotic fluid looks quite increased. The fetus is floating within the fluid. Now let's evaluate the cerebellar abnormality a little more deeper. Here is the sagittal section and you can see there is a caudal herniation this is the cranial part, this is the caudal part. There is a caudal herniation of the cerebellar tonsil, which is causing the effacement of the cisterna magnum. Make sure to be a little bit careful about the presence of any upper cervical abnormality here, which will turn it into a cherry 3 malformation. This is the tonsil, which is coming downwards, that is herniating caudally, causing effacement of the cisterna magnum. So this is the reason why you see there is a deformity in the shape of the cerebellum. Let's look a little more carefully. There is a soft tissue area, that is the caudal herniation of the cerebellar tonsil, causing effacement of the cisterna magnum. You see, these ecogenic areas over the skin are the fetal hair. Here is the still image and you can see with curvilinear transducer, this is the herniation of the cerebellar tonsil. This part is quite superficial from the skin. We can also use the high frequency linear transducer to get a better detail. And here you can see this is the cerebellar tonsil herniating downwards. 
these are the high frequency views and you can see the corner sections of the fetal facial region and the view and the head doesn't look quite normal this is not a regular shape of the fetal face that we commonly get now let's jump into the fetal heart here's a four chamber view the heart is covering more than 50 percent of the thoracic diameter so it is a case of cardiomegaly also here's the approximate measurement of the cardiac axis which is around 61 degree that is within normal limit As it is a cardiomegaly, always try to put the color Doppler and with color Doppler there was no tricuspid regurgitation from this image. Now let's jump into the spine of the fetus. Here you can see the fetal spine in coronal oblique and axial sections. The lower lumbar spine shows the splaying of the ossification centers and there was no skin covering at that part and you easily can see there is a cystic lesion coming out from that part. This cystic lesion contains internal ecogenic areas that is actually the neural tissues within. So this is definitely a lumbar meningomyelocil which is associated with an open spina bifida. I have magnified the image and you can easily see the splaying of the ossification centers here that is the spina bifida and you can see this is a thick skin which disappeared at that part so this is an open spina bifida that is not covered by the skin usually the open spina bifida is associated with the cystic lesion here which is meningomyelocele as you can see there are some ecogenic areas within so this is the meningomyelocele otherwise we would call it meningocele Here's the still picture, you can see the meningomyelocele and this is the splaying of the ossification center that is the open spina bifida. In this image you can see this cystic lesion is not covered with the skin here, you can see this is the skin. There are some ecogenic areas within which is definitely the neural component. Now let's look at the leg of the fetus. We tried to evaluate two feet, one looks quite normal, which may be possible, but another foot shows clubbing. You can see this is the tibia fibula, and when you see the tibia fibula in long axis, then there should not be the presence of five finger view of the foot. But here we can see this is the five finger view of the foot, there is an angulation here, which is due to the clubbing. Let's see on real time. Here's one foot, and here is another one. This one shows the clubbing. You see, this is the angulation here. This is the longitudinal view of the tibia fibula and with longitudinal view of tibia fibula, you should not see five finger view of the foot as it is present. So this is definitely a club foot. Here's the still picture of the club foot. Is it over? No, we want to search a little more. Let's look at the air here. This is the fetal air. Air in coronal section doesn't look like this in normal patients. So this is a low set air with some deformity. Here's the still picture of the deformed low set air. As you can see, there is fluid over this part and it is quite superficial, so we easily can use 3D ultrasound to evaluate further. So let's look at the 3D picture. Here is the 3D picture view. Make sure this is not taken with the regular four dimensional volumetric transducer. I took it with manual processing with a normal curvilinear transducer. If your machine has that type of function, then you easily can use that in absence of four dimensional transducer. This is the eye, this is a part of nose which was hidden under the part of fetal upper limb and this is the low set air. You can see it looks quite like collapsed air. The fetus was female, this is the vaginal region and the amniotic fluid looks quite increased. 
So here's another picture with a posterior placenta and an increased amount of amniotic fluid in this patient. So we tried to measure the amniotic fluid index and it was more than 24 centimeter during our ultrasound. So let's make a summary. It doesn't look like a summary, but let's try. It's a 25 to 26 weeks of single life intrauterian pregnancy with breech presentation and polyhydramnios at present. The fetus had the features of cherry 2 malformation. We have found several features like frontal bone concavity forming the lemon shaped head, branch shaped cerebellum curving around the midbrain, and there was cerebellar tonsillar caudal herniation with effaced cisterna magnum. There was presence of ventriculomegaly. We have seen the splaying of the lumbar vertebral ossification centers without the presence of overlying skin, indicating it as a case of open lumbar spina bifida with meningomyelocele. We have got some associated anomalies like cardiomegaly, low set deformed air, and club foot. Now the take home message. I always tell people that when you get an anomaly, try not to miss others. It's like a searching game. The more you give the patient time, the more anomalies you can get. Well, before ending, we want to go for a single slide of cherry 2 malformation. Here we get the small posterior fossa with cerebellar compression and hindbrain herniation through the foramen magnum and almost always it is associated with open neural tube defect, typically the lumbar meningomyelocele. We usually get cerebellar compression that is seen as a banana sign and loss of cisterna magnum. There should be the presence of frontal bone concavity forming the lemon sign. There should be the presence of ventriculomegaly as some compression going over there and almost always associated with open neural tip defect. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure to get a lot of videos in recent days as I have already finished my exam and I have some spare time to make some videos for you. So don't forget to subscribe our YouTube channel if you haven't already and try to hit the bell icon to get notified about our next posts. See you on the next one. Have a nice day.